inviting me here to talk on our experiences on PRRT. But the topic given to me is PRRT. First, you want to do first or follow up or combination of everything. <coughs> so usually how we approach NEDs, <coughs> most of the time in my clinical experience I've seen, it is accidental discovery. They have gone for some other investigation, they do ultrasound or some investigation, then the metastasis are found. Then initially it may be missed diagnosis in the past. And one thing is the moment you see these patients with such extensive disease, the general condition is too good to be true for the amount of metastasis they have. So that we have to always think that this patient may be having a neuroendocrine tumor. Usually CTMR would have been done. And what happens, these patients usually undergo FDG PET scan because the initial diagnosis must have been MUO. So then when we do a PET scan, FDG uptake is not there, then it strikes to our mind it may be a different biology. Then we usually recommend if this may be the one, you please recommend a daughter not scan. Or a astute physician, a group physician with uh, some symptomatology, with uh, tumor markers, he may straight away advise a gallium daughter not scan. And <coughs> it, these patients may or may not undergo endoscopy, or usually they would have undergone a biopsy from the liver or wherever a huge metastatic burden is there. So now, for all the future management, this is the standard now, investigation of choice. So what is the sequencing of various options available? So topic for me is PRRT, but before I come to PRRT, I have to know something about all other options available because they are still doing a good job. But we can improve a better survival in combination with all these things. So let us see what are all the other options available. <coughs> These are varieties of uh, all these associations, NET, NAT, uh, ENET, COM, NANET, ESMO, NCCN guidelines, all of them have suggested that surgery should be considered wherever possible feasible because that is the only curative uh, thing which is possible in, a, in neuroendocrine tumors. Then all of them have recommended sandostatins, then comes targeted therapies. When it fails, then comes chemotherapy, then the last one, most of all these associations have mentioned PRRT. Only the last column, if you see that ANM and SNNMI and IEA, International Atomic Energy Regulations, they say that the PRRT can be coming as a first line now. So let us see some evidences there. Now surgery should be considered when it is possible because that is the only thing which is cure is possible. However, most of the cases this is not possible because Usually they present with a huge metastatic burden. Liver, one or two is there, they can still do a berry picking, but most of the time multiple, both the lobes are involved and multi, it is started with a metastasis. So the Berlin consensus for regarding the surgery said that if you are able to take out 90% of the tumor volume with a post-operative complication or intra-operative mortality of less than 10%, you can still give a good survival of almost 72 months in these patients. They brought it to 70%. If you can remove 70% of the tumor burden, still it is good for doing a surgery. Then comes after this interventional radiology when surgery is not possible. Even today, many centers will do this. If possible and feasible, then radiofrequency ablation, embolization, all those things is possible, provided the num size is less than 5 centimeter. And <coughs> according to most ENET guidelines now, uh, radio frequency ablation, micro ablation, cryoablation can be considered. Okay, but when there are innumerable, then tear or taste can be considered. Then the local regional therapies, that is, uh, tear and tear, should be exploited early following SSA. Suppose your sandostatin fail, then if the, it is possible to do, you can still consider uh, tear therapies or taste therapies. And it can be now considered if you combine it along with PRRT, the results are better compared to tear alone. But please remember that the tear should, with our experience, should be always kept as a last resort. Because if we do both, the cumulative hepatotoxicity may be more. And a newer targeted therapies are coming. And if you are already blocked by doing a tear, the new vascularization, your future therapies may not be good. So we have to be careful. If we are considering a tear, please keep a tear or taste as a uh, uh, last resort, or in certain cases, it may be the only options available. Then comes somatostatin analogs. I will not go into great detail. All these uh, trials have established the role of uh, sandostatin in your treatment. I will not go into detail. Then comes the targeted therapy. If it fails, 
then you are going to exploit the mTOR or kinase, uh, tyrosine kinase pathway. They found out that the Eurolimus was better, but in the trial, they found out that the Eurolimus results, overall survival, they are not as much greater than standostatin, and yet they were having more complications, so it, has, uh, not, uh, it is not favored that much nowadays. Then comes your systemic chemotherapies. The, uh, if you take into account uh, the varieties of chemotherapies, you take uh, all the historical uh, chemotherapies, the captain regimen is the flavor of the season now. So most of uh, you are doing it, and we also use it along with our PRRT. Then comes dual tracer PET CT. Before we recommend PRRT, we always do FDG PET scan as well as Dotanox scan because in histopathology, you might have sh shown that it is a low-grade tumor, but we always, when we are suggesting uh, 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 PRRT, we do FDG because we see many times that there is FDG positive also. So it may be tumor heterogeneity. So it will tell us, it will tell the tumor biology better. We combine both. Now let us see some peptide therapy. What we actually do, it is uh, all the tumors express a subtype of a Sandoz, uh, this is a somatostatin receptor type 2, is more expressed. And we are using an analog called dotatate, which we attach it to lutetium. It gets internalized, and then it is closer to nucleus, and it gives radiation without causing a significant uh, collateral damage. That's why the results are better. This is it. So what are the isotopes available? Yttrium-90, lutetium, and actinium. Yttrium is not that popular in our country. Earlier, they were also using it. It is good for bulky tumors because it has a larger uh, uh, path to travel, beta. And uh, there are some uh, cocktail therapies also. If suppose there is a big uh, mass and a small mass also, you can combine uh, both lutetium as well as uh, uh, yttrium. Uh, and uh, most of the centers in our country do uh, lutetium, and some centers, including us, we do actinium in highly select cases. This is what established the role of uh, PRRT, that uh, they have done a study with uh, PRRT and they compared it with sandostatin. They found out the better survival results with uh, phase three NETRA trials. Now, another NETRA trial two is going on. We are just uh, waiting for that. What it established, there is a progression-free survival and overall survival is definitely better with PRRT compared to uh, sandostatin that was uh, used as a control group. So the results of NETR phase three trials are that there is uh, uh, at 20 months, 65% progression-free survival was seen compared to other group, and overall response rate was 18% compared to 3% with the Sandostatin group. So next is the state of the art, peptide receptor radionuclide therapy and its sequencing. Now we have established that it has a role, and uh, it can be in all these permutations, combination, it depends upon your uh, patient individual problems and your uh, MDT decisions. It can be done along with surgery, before surgery, after surgery. It can do uh, cocktail therapies. We, it, ca it can be done as intra-arterial and tandem RT. So all these permutation combinations are possible. So there is emerging role and research on utility of PRRT are as follows. One suggested that please do PRRT as an adjuvant therapy in all the patients in inoperable uh, neuroendocrine tumors. And PRRT could be used along with sandostatin. Third, PRRT followed immediately after surgical resection. And PRRT in combination with chemotherapy, we call it CTPRRT, and we have achieved in this 15%, it can be complete response rates and the median progression-free survival is almost 31 months. And PRRT in combination with mTOR inhibitors also. So these are all the possibilities with the surgery. So it can be used as a knee adjuvant, it can be used as adjunctive surgery, adjuvant, and all those things. And wherever possible to debulk surgery, if possible and feasible, and after PRRT also you can consider. Some, we'll see one example here, uh, a tumor here, and uh, uh, a pancreatic tumor, uh, FDG negative, so that we know that it is a low-grade tumor. Two therapies we are given, a good regression, and you can see here a very good re response after two cycles, and now you can surgery, uh, this patient undergoes surgery. So it is possible in this setting also as a near joint. And uh, when you combine with the surgery, the results are always better. 
uh, if when it is PRRT is done before surgery. <coughs> and uh, this is a study published with more than 700 patients with small tumors, NETs, pancreatic or gastric uh, uh, bowel NETs also. If you have done PRRT before or after, compared to surgery alone, the results are always better, survival is better. Now comes the current flavor, CTPRRT, that is chemotherapy along with PRRT. There are varieties of, uh, there are plenty of uh, trials are going on. These are the four trials which are important, what is called as control uh, trial. What they have done is, <coughs> they have given a captum along with PRRT, that is one group. Another one, only PRRT. The results were better with captum along with PRRT. Then comes Lucas trial, where they have done the same study, that is captum, PRRT along, and after the therapy, you continue sandostatin. Another group, only uh, PRRT and stop it. So Lucas trial, they found out that if you, after all your therapy, you continue treating them with the sandostatin, they have a better uh, survival and a better quality of life. Ocular random study, this is where they try to do it with sunitinib. And a castor study, it is uh, PRRT along with, uh, 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 this is uh, along with <coughs> interferon. There are, apart from that, there are another seven therapies are going on concurrently along with PRRT. That means it has a role to play. Everyone has their stuff. I have come to a conclusion that PRRT, if you combine along with your chemotherapy, survival is better. So all these trials are coming only to add and see which one is giving better with the different chemotherapy regimens. So in G3, that is high-grade tumors, so definitely you are going to use chemotherapy. In this also, if it has both FDG positive as well as Dotanac positive, high-grade tumor, do PRRT along with your whatever chemotherapy you give, they are going to respond better compared to chemotherapy alone. If it is dotate therapy negative, uh, dotate scan negative, then only chemotherapy. Usually the results are not at all good in G3 results. One example here, FDG PET scan was done because it was high grade, received, uh, <coughs> underwent a surgery, after followed by chemotherapy, six cycles, doing well, but suddenly after six months, they present with like this. Now what next? So this patient, now we, uh, we evaluated whether we can still continue with PRRT. His general condition was good. He was receptor positive. Even though he was high grade, we are given a two cycles of therapy. So all these possibilities are there. So in HCG, seeing at all these things, we try to modify this in what is best possible way. I started doing therapy in 2009, learned lessons by our mistakes and by experience 2014. From 2014, we are doing PRRT entirely differently compared to any center in the world. And uh, <coughs> I'll show you my results here. So what we have found out is, wherever possible, debulking surgery. If possible and feasible, do it. Sandostatin is started, progresses. Next, consider PRRT. Two cycles of PRRT we give. That is along with chemotherapy, followed by Sandostatin, because I'm taking a part of Lucas trial here. And if there is a progression, Later, you can again add CTPRRT. And in between, if it is possible and feasible to do surgery, so please go ahead and do it surgery. So let us see. We do only two cycles, whereas Netter trials and any other center in the world, they suggest four. Why? I'll show you our results. Because by the time they come to us, they have already spent a lot of money. Insurance is not giving you any uh, patients. They are not getting any reimbursement because still it is not recognized. They would have spent a lot of money and they, are, they don't have money to have treatment of this. And I don't use uh, locally available uh, lutetium because the results are not good. The imported lutetium is expensive. So what we decided, and it is very good quality. And uh, the quality of lutetium matters in these patients. Some of you might have seen very dismal results with the lutetium therapy in your experience. It is because of the quality of lutetium, which uh, I will not go into detail. So we do differently. What we do is, we do <coughs> intra-arterially. Because this was being done for the first time, we were invited in APNET, which uh, Asia Pacific, and this is where I published, I uh, talked about my experience. So aim of our therapy or our study was, 
to do liver direct because most of these patients come with a liver metastasis. This is where the burden is and this is the problem. So we give therapy. The selection of the cases are, I will not go into detail, when ev everything fails, exclusion criteria, you should have a good survival benefit. Compromised renal function, renal functions, we don't use it. FDG positive, we don't use it. So we have two uh, sets, so 94 where only PRRT was done, IV, and around 68 patients where we did intra-arterial PRRT along with captum. And uh, this is our protocol. Usually it is managed by our medical oncology team, Dr. Shekhar Patil uh, team will look after the medical oncology, the captum regimen. And on the 10th day of your captum regimen, we do a lutetium therapy. And they finish the therapy in 14 days. Three weeks gap is given. Then they do take another two to three cycles of chemotherapy. Then when they are due for the next lutetium therapy, by the time they would have finished about five or six chemotherapy cycles, that is the end of it. And <coughs> the side effects, we have seen only nausea because of timozolamide. We have not seen any bone marrow suppression, et cetera. The data analysis, what we have done is, uh, I will show you the examples. Because we are giving intra-arterial, we are able to deliver 50% more dose. And we can even, uh, you can see the uh, images here, beautifully they can accumulate. Wherever possible, we try to go and uh, identify the, the feeding vessel to the large primary tumor so that they also get the dose. And because of that, this is the type of results we exp expect. We can see the first one and then even the large pancreatic tumor has also responded very well. This is not at all possible if we give IV because when we give IV, 20% of the dose will never reach the tumor. And we bypass the renal uh, toxicity also because we are uh, uh, perfusing the tumor. And because we send via the artery, the first pass extraction will always be better and we are getting a better results. These are the type of uh, images we usually don't see if we give IV. Uh, hardly you can see any renal uptake here. So these are some of the examples. You can see the excellent response after a second PRRT. So this is a lung carcinoid. When the patient came to us after a number of chemotherapies, we started PRRT. You can see the results by, by two years. It's almost disease-free because we had it. Wherever possible and feasible, we always try to give where the tumor is. If it is isolated, we try to put some dose directly percutaneously into the tumor. And this is what we have done. <coughs> Tear, if possible, do it. And in our center, we do iodine 130 on lipidol. Some patients don't have money at all for anything. Tear is a bit cheaper in our center. And if nothing is possible, along with standard we give tear. This is one example where uh, we can see the uptake in the tumor there, in the hepatic metastasis. And the results here, and another case where we have done, first one is uh, after the uh, patient could not afford uh, lutetium therapy, the middle image shows the lipidol deposition, the last one shows some response there. And uh, one case I will just show you how we can <coughs> interchange all these permutation combinations. This was a patient was a doctor. Patient came to us in 2012 with all this metastatic disease. He had had many chemotherapies earlier. And we did give two cycles of chemotherapies. His diarrhea stopped. And then at that time, I was a bit very confident about lipidol. Nowadays, I am not doing, but we gave a lipidol. He did respond very well. You can see there was almost, he was disease free here. And this was remaining. That's why we said if only that mass is there, you please undergo surgery. He underwent surgery, and he was doing fine. Is this is the from 2013 up to 2022, 10 years. What we have done is there are the metastases have come, but what we have done, Lucas trial along with our HCG trial, we are now putting him only on sandostatin. That too, once in two months. He is he says I will not take every month. Once in two months, only now. The liver metastases have increased. So for almost, you can say from 2015 up to 2022, after our consolidation, he's only on sandostatin. Before that, he had that much of disease. So we should not treat only the images. Wait, these patients should not be aggressively treated also because they may land up with complication. This is just uh, last week we finished his second therapy. Here also you can still see a good response. And uh, now cumulatively he has received totally five cycles and he's doing well. And when uh, the therapy, <coughs> when lutetium also fails, we are still have an actinium. You can see the top image, bottom image is lutetium. He did not do well. He was able to afford actinium and we are given, and we have shown you. And in our center, it is only intra-arterial. We never give IV at all. 
So that's why you can see this type of a response rates. So the mean estimate of overall survival, IAPRRT versus IVPRRT in our is, is quite evident here. And because of that, we give only to put them on sandostatin, on and off chemotherapy by a medical oncologist. Wherever possible surgery, please do. I have just given an example. And now comes high-grade tumor. What are the options? Neuroendocrine carcinoma. They are not responsive to anything. Chemotherapy is the only option. But now there is a new mm -hmm. kit available now. What is called as FAP. We are going to do. We have developed in-house. This is currently not available. Commercially not available. It is not approved. This is just new thing happening. You can see very high grade tumor here, FDG. And we have done a FAP9 scan. FAP is fibroblast activating protein inhibitor. And there is avid uptake now. So we are going to give this therapy also now, followed by chemotherapy. We have done about 88 cases of a different type of cancer, not only neuroendocrine, then everything else fails. So these patients become chemosensitive again. This is a very interesting topic coming in future. The, you will keep hearing about FAPI 9, like what you heard about PSMA therapy, dotated therapy. It was never approved or never uh, appreciated at all. Only in about eight or 10 years later, it is coming into the picture. Like that, the FAPI 9 or FAPI therapy, what we are going to do is give, we are targeting the tumor micro environment. This is responsible for the your uh, resistance to chemotherapy or your immunotherapy. So remove the micro environment. It is called a soil and seed theory. So soil, you try to disrupt the soil, make it unfertile so that your chemotherapies are going to work better. This is what is uh, going to happen in future. And uh, so in conclusion, it is not the uh, one uh, standard therapy at all. It depends, it, it has to be individualized and you have to follow and it is a multidisciplinary approach now. Thank you very much.